Metropolis Lux Obscura is available now on Steam, PS4, and Nintendo Switch for $7.99 USD or your regional equivalent. It's a mixture of Match 3 puzzles, RPG elements, and a visual novel delivered in a grungy, film noir comic book style. We're Need to Know, and today we'll be taking a look at the PS4 and Switch versions of Metropolis. I'm Don. And I'm Nico. This is Cthulhu Solutions' first game, and I must say, I was pleasantly surprised by the solid, albeit cliched storytelling and strategic match 3 battle mechanics. As such, I ended up earning three of four possible endings in one sitting, which doesn't speak highly of the game's length, though it's a pretty good indicator of how engrossing gameplay is. The artwork is what first caught my attention, though I'm somewhat surprised that Nintendo allowed more adult content onto their family-friendly console. The story is on the cliché side, following John Lockhart, who is a hard-ass fresh out of prison after serving a term for something he didn't do. He then proceeds to work for an Italian mob boss, beat the stuffing out of people and dogs, and have sex with various strippers. If you're easily offended by some nudity and casually dropped f-bombs, you probably won't like what this game has to say. The match three sessions, sandwiched between narrative sections, pit you against foes, usually a single opponent, though sometimes a chain of two or three, and you take turns attacking each other. Per the game's rules, a match can be made by moving a tile along its row, either up and down, or left and right. The other tiles will shift according to the one you moved, so to keep that in mind. The tiles depict different weapons that John uses to attack, fists, boots, chains, and chemicals and the like, which fit nicely into the theme, and can also be upgraded by learning certain skills. Health items, and police badges, which damage you if you match them. There are skills that can be used to lessen and even erase these if they're giving you trouble, and there's something to watch out for as they can be the death of you if you aren't paying close attention. There's a counter that tells you how many matches, denoted as turns, you can make before the enemy will retaliate. I enjoy this style of match 3 the most because it gives me all the time I need to formulate the best move while also maintaining the tension of a versus situation by tracking the enemy's attack. It's a nice balance, and once you add a dash of challenge and a host of skills your character can learn to affect the tide of battle, Metropolis has an excellent combat setup. The Switch version is not much different from the console version, except you can take it with you. The game still looks like a beautiful neo noir comic book, and the soundtrack is pretty good. The Switch version utilizes the touchscreen, which does have some bugs of its own. For one, the touch controls didn't work 100% of the time, and when they did, sometimes moving tiles would freeze the game. And the only way that I could fix that was to close the game down entirely. Having done that, sometimes when I got back into the game, there were instances where locations on the map would randomly disappear. And I'd have to start back from the previous location. It's pretty frustrating at times, but it happened several times. And um, it was to the point where I didn't really feel like playing. Because it's, it's not always easy to win some of these matches. But this happened a little more often than I would have liked it to. In the PS4 version, um, there are also bugs where the tiles would disappear and wouldn't get refilled, or the game would allow you to move tiles in any direction without registering matches, in which case, like Nico, I had to close out the game entirely and reattempt the fight. It was a bit frustrating, but infrequent for the most part. Um, important note for trophy hunters, some of the trophies are also bugged and will not pop on upon completing their requisites. Um, I had one last trophy that I needed for the Platinum, and I actually uninstalled and reinstalled the game, played through entirely, and it popped at the end of my playthrough. Combat, though effective, isn't perfect, as luck plays quite a large factor at times. Uh, based on your randomized initial setup, you may get diddly squat in terms of damage and combos. Fortunately, there's no penalty for getting a game over, and you can step right back into the fight after loading up your saved file. Important quality of life factors like the ability to skip cutscenes are in place, making retrying fights less tedious, and also easing multiple playthroughs in which you try to get the other endings. Uh, now the skills I mentioned, the RPG elements, are a mixed bag where you need to some of them you need to fulfill certain conditions like matching four tiles, and some of them were passive skills that had a set percentage of activating. You get to choose one skill after each successful fight from a randomized list of four. Unfortunately, since the game is so short and some paths don't have as many fights, you don't really get a full feel for the available skills unless you play through multiple times. What's he trying to off me? Hey Lockhart, thought you was one of Falcone's thugs. Really? 
Well, shit's always hard when you're being stupid. I'll take this. Shade used to laugh at junkies. Now, he's one himself. He can't even sell this shit without getting his ass kicked and robbed of Falcone's money and his product. Fuck you, Lockhart. Did Jack know you was fucking his bliss? Shade. Final verdict. Highly recommended. Once the bugs are ironed out, Metropolis will prove to be a solid storytelling and match the experience with an added bonus of a few titillating scenes. Its length aside, it's a great title that deserves to at least be added to your wish list if you don't have the modest seven bucks to spare at the moment. Let us know in the comments what ending you got first, no spoilers please, if you pick up the game, and as always, stay in the know.